Good evening. So when I asked Rosa Frank, our fabulous director of development, how long I had to speak, she said she would, have, she would give me one year for each minute that I was chair of the board. So that'd be one minute, is that what I said? One minute. I'm already a minute in, so that would be six minutes. And then, and then Suzanne advised me that I should really only talk for four minutes, but truthfully, nobody really wanted to hear me for more than three minutes. So first, some thank yous. So thank you all for coming this evening, for your support of Hebrew College, for your support of Dan Miller and your support of me. It means a lot, and it's fun to see so many fans and supporters here. To my partner tonight, Dan Miller. Dan and I grew up in the finance business. In fact, he's still growing up. <laughs> and we've crossed paths many times. Dan, thank you for your dedication and generosity to Hebrew College. Thank you for being the good guy that you are, that Orr so very well described. And thank you for saying yes when I invited you to be my partner for this evening. To our board, many times we laughed and celebrated, but there was also some very difficult work. You always showed up, willing to engage, listen, and push back when appropriate. When I asked you to help me and join committees, every one of you said yes all the time. As chair, I could ask for nothing more. And more importantly, you had my back. We did not always agree, but I knew it was not personal, and we needed to put the college first. Without this, we could not have accomplished nearly what we did. Thank you. Our CFO, our CFO Keith Dropkin. Keith, where are you? You're out there somewhere. There you are. So, so I'm a numbers guy. You may have heard me say this on occasion. And from the minute I started this role in March of 2017, I knew I could always trust the accuracy and completeness of the numbers from Keith. Keith has a nickname. We call him Under Promise and Over Deliver. <laughs> and by the way, this is exactly what one needs from a financial officer. One who understands the numbers, reports them accurately, and when it comes to budgeting, under promises and then exceeds the expectations. Keith, I'm lucky to have worked with you, and Hebrew College is lucky to have you, so thank you. And to my partner, my friend, our president, Rabbi Sharon Konanisfeld. Sharon and I both started our roles within six months of one another. We're both left-handed, and we're, and we're actually born within three months of one another. I'm actually the older one. <laughs> So we both knew not so much about the college, about the current state of the college when we took over, but we dug in. Early mornings, long nights, followed by more, more early mornings. There were some moments we were literally communicating 24 hours per day. I could talk all night about our working together, but we'll just offer this. Sharon, you taught me leadership, compassion, patience, listening, and it's okay to be vulnerable. We are deep working partners and friends. And by the way, the only reason why this worked is through the support of our spouses, Shimmy and Suzanne. So thank you, Shimmy and Suzanne. So I want to I want to give a quick update on the college. Um, I'm a numbers guy. You may have heard me say this, and I want to reiterate some of our numbers. Currently, we have 80 students in the rabbinical school, which is an all-time high. that this year will educate over 3,000 people through our community education programs, also an all-time high. <laughs> that the placement rate, the placement rate of our rabbinical school graduates is over 95%. <laughs> I actually think, I actually say, I think it's better than Harvard Business School, although they have a lot more people than we do. We have no debt for the first time in 25 years, which we're most proud of. Our endowment is 3.5 million and growing. We're in our new home, which is right-sized, and we're joined by our wonderful partners, and it's beautiful. And our budget, our budget is balanced and sustainable. And as you heard in the video, you know, I pledged several years ago to move to our new home with no debt and a balanced and sustainable budget. And we did it, all of us, so thank you. As leaders, as leaders, we can only strive to leave our institutions in better shape than when we found them. And we did this. Hebrew College, now 101 years strong, is financially secure, 
The programs are thriving, and we have an exciting plan for the transition to Nancy Belsky as our next chair. <laughs> Nancy, that, that Nancy is smart, collaborative, hardworking, and has the perfect skill set to take the college to the next level. And I'm so confident Nancy is our, as my successor. So, so, so I want to try something here. So I want to conduct a short survey, and I'm going to need you to participate. So, so sometimes I'm asked the question, what is Hebrew College's impact on the community? And do we really need Hebrew College? Which is quite a question. So there was a clear need 100 years ago when American Jews needed to be taught to speak Hebrew. Or 50 years ago when no universities offered any courses on Jewish history, past and present. Or 20 years ago when Prozor was the only game in town and, and boasted an enrollment of close to 900. But how about today? So let's try to measure Hebrew College's impact on the community. So this is the part where I need you. So please stand if you belong to a synagogue that has a Hebrew College rabbi, cantor, or rabbinical intern. So also please stand if you participated in an organization or school like JCDS, Schechter, GAN, Two Life uh, Communities, or Hebrew Senior Life that has Hebrew College graduates working there. So anyone that participated and worked in those schools. Also, please stand if you've enrolled in programs in our community ed, like MEA, Open Circle, or Part Parenting Through a Jewish Lens. And finally, stand if you've interacted with the Miller Center, which is, as you heard today, is a leader globally in interfaith engagement. So look around. If you are standing that your community, your Jewish life, you and your family has been touched by Hebrew College. So thank you. You can sit down now. And this is just the people in this room. You know, geographically, our reach is far greater, from Washington, D.C., to Chicago, to San Francisco, to Australia, to Brazil, and of course, to Israel. By program, we staff institutions and organizations doing work around policy and supporting underrepresented and vulnerable populations. Our graduates perform highly impactful one-on-one -on -one interactions at bar mitzvahs, weddings, funerals, and many life cycle events. And the list goes on and on. If any of these are familiar to you, know that this is Hebrew College. This is our touching you. This is why we value Hebrew College. So do we need Hebrew College? You could look around, see everyone standing, and you be the judge. So I'm over my time. But I want to close by offering a feeling I actually very rarely share publicly, and that's pride. I worked hard as chair and take great pride in what has been accomplished. We did a great job, all of us. And as our leader, I'm proud of my work, I'm proud of my impact, and I'm proud of my legacy at Hebrew College. It takes a village, and I'm honored and proud to have led that village. Thank you.